Carson Quapple will be racing full-time in the Xfinity Series in 2025, an update from the new iRacing video game that's coming out next year. NASCAR Netflix is back for a second season, and SVG says that the playoffs are too complicated. <laughs> Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Fresh off of a win in one of the largest late model stock races in the country, the Valley Star 300 at Martinsville, Carson Guapo got another win, if we're being completely honest, when Junior Motorsports announced on Tuesday that he will drive full-time for them in the Xfinity Series next year in the number one car. It is a massive opportunity for Carson Quapel, one of the most highly coveted prospects out there right now. The kid has been really, really good in his select Xfinity Series starts this season. He has eight Xfinity Series starts this year, an average finish of 11.5, three top five finishes, four top 10 finishes, and nearly won the Dover Spring Race in only his second ever season start uh, when he just kind of stood up to Austin Hill and come to find out Carson Quabble doesn't give a damn about Austin Hill and all of his nonsense that comes along with it. He's willing to hold his line and not get pushed around, which is honestly something that you absolutely are going to have to do next season in 2025 because he's going to be contending for race wins. Austin Hill is going to be contending for race wins. But for Carson Quapple, this is huge for the short track community, right? This is now the second guy that Junior Motorsports has brought up from the uh, Cars Tour and put into a full-time ride in the Xfinity Series. Of course, Josh Berry kind of, you know, blazed that trail. Now Carson Quapple is getting this opportunity as well. Dale had him running down, you know, in the late model stock division in the Cars Tour, winning championships, winning races, and uh, now he moves up. And that's a good thing. It gives opportunities to guys that, you know, don't have that family funding or don't have that sponsor behind them to help them move up the ladder. Da or Dale's out there essentially kind of being the sugar daddy for some of these drivers. And that's not a derogatory statement at all. Like, you need help along the way. But this is proof that on talent, you can still make it to the top levels of NASCAR. You just need things to go your way, um, you know, in that process. Obviously, you know, Junior Motorsports put Bubba Pollard into a car earlier this year at Richmond. He got a P6 finish. We've seen uh, Butterbean get an opportunity as well uh, with Tricon in the truck series. And hopefully we get to see more of these guys continue to move up. Connor Hall got an opportunity as well. And I would love to see these guys get more opportunities um, you know, as the car store continues to grow and people are actually paying attention. That is a series where drivers can learn so much about racecraft. I would argue that it's better to put your drivers that you're trying to develop in the car store than it is to put them in the ARCA series. The competition in the car store is exponentially better than what you're getting in ARCA right now. And just the level of uh, the diversity rather of drivers um, will teach these kids racecraft, kids, even adults at this point. But there's a reason that we see a lot of these guys move up. Josh Berry has really good racecraft. Carson Quapple, really good racecraft. And it's because they learn down there and move up, unlike some of these kids that come up through uh, ARCA. Not saying all of them are bad, but we've seen some of them get bad tendencies along the way. So for Carson Quapple, he now completes a really stout junior motorsports lineup for the Xfinity Series in 2025. You have Carson Quapple in the number one. You have Justin Allgaier in the number seven, Sammy Smith in the number eight, and Connor Zilich in the number 88. Three of those four drivers already have wins. Three of those four drivers are probably going to contend for playoff spots next year, if not all four drivers. Three of them could have legitimate shots at a championship next year. Um, Sammy Smith probably needs to find his footing a little bit more, but right now I have more faith in you know, Carson Quapple to make it to, you know, the playoffs and potentially even make a run at a championship than I do Sammy Smith at the moment. But these are all guys that are capable of winning races, capable of contending for a championship. And Junior Motorsports has to be sitting back pretty happy about where things currently stand at uh, for them going forward. But nice to see Carson Quapple get this opportunity in 2025. Following flips by Corey LaJoy earlier in this year at Michigan and Josh Berry at the regular season finale at Daytona, NASCAR has come up with a three-part solution to hopefully keep cars from flipping over when they turn sideways at super speedways. The first change that is coming will be a change to the roof rails. It'll be raised to two inches there was talk about basically taking that shark fin and extending it all the way down onto the windshield drivers weren't happy about that a lot of talk about visibility uh, so that was scrapped instead we will get roof rails that are raised to two inches another change that is coming is to the right side roof flap a piece of fabric has been added to that to hopefully uh, block the wind and prevent that um, from getting through 
The third change that we made before cars hit track this weekend at Talladega is an extension to the rocker panel. Uh, the idea is to limit the amount of air that is able to get underneath these race cars because um, the underbody of this car is flat. And when you have a flat uh, surface like that and it hits wind a certain direction, guess what happens? Takeoff. The Wright brothers taught us that. Uh, and the hills of North Carolina or Dayton or, where, or whoever wants to claim them at this point. Obviously, all these changes are being made to keep these cars on the ground. The rocker panel change, I think, is a good move. Uh, hopefully, that prevents air from getting underneath it. The roof flap, I think that's a minor change, but should hopefully have a small uh, uh, beneficial factor in it. The roof rails is another big thing as well. NASCAR's whole goal in this entire uh, thing, making these changes, is to increase that minimum takeoff speed. So right now, we'll just assume when Corey LaJoy turns sideways at Michigan, he is going, hypothetically, 185 mile an hour. So the takeoff speed is 185 mile an hour. NASCAR's hoping with these changes that that takeoff speed goes up to something like uh, 220 mile per hour. That way, you have to be going 220 mile per hour before the car lifts off. NASCAR's confident these cars will not be going 220 mile per hour at Talladega this weekend, meaning if they turn sideways, they should stay on the ground. Now, obviously, uh, nobody wants to see cars get up and flip over. I know some drivers say they'd rather hit a wall or rather flip than hit a wall. And while I understand that, flipping comes with a lot of variables. Not only is it driver safety, there's also parts flying off the car. God forbid you're close to a fence. Fans are around right there. Controlling a flip is pretty difficult. Controlling a car hitting a wall is much more uh, controllable. A lot less variables in that situation uh, in terms of, you know, outside of the, the cockpit. So uh, I think this is a good move by NASCAR. Hopefully this provides some of the changes that they're hoping for and, you know, comes up with a solution. And hopefully we don't see anybody flip over this weekend in Talladega. We also got some interesting uh, updates on Monday. First, we'll start off with the NASCAR video game. Of course, the steaming pile of garbage that was NASCAR Ignition, that's gone. Motorsports games, out of business. Nobody's doing anything with them anymore. They sold their license, the NASCAR license, to Monster Games, which, of course, is part of iRacing, and they're going to be put out putting out a console game, NASCAR 25 in, well, 2025. iRacing Steve Myers did share a bit of an update on uh, Monday, and it sounds like it's going to be really entertaining. So if you haven't played the World of Outlaws video game yet, I can't stress enough how enjoyable that game is. It's one of the best racing games that's currently out there right now. It's a game where you can just sit down on the couch, play a couple of races. There's a great um, level of competitiveness with that game. The difficulty isn't too difficult, but it's not too easy. You're not going to go out and win every single race, and it's a fun time. Now, Steve says that the new NASCAR video game is going to race and feel a lot like that World of Outlaws game, and that's a really good thing. Obviously, he doesn't mean that all the cars are going to be sliding around and, you know, driving like NASCAR Heat 5, probably. But what he does mean is that, like, it's going to have this fun uh, capability of just being able to pick it up and play it. And that's a good thing. I'm going to eat up all of these updates that Steve gives up. It's like that, in, like Jimmy Spencer at a buffet, because I want this game to be successful. I want it to be a lot like the World Outlaws game. I want something where I can sit down on my couch at night knock out a race or two and not have to feel like I need to set up a steering wheel and the pedals and have the double monitors, th triple monitors. If you want a sim, iRacing is perfect for that. If you want a console game, that's what this should be. Something where you can just pick up a controller and play it like that. So Steve gave us an update through a couple of tweets on Monday, and honestly, it sounds really fun. His first one, he talked about how uh, if you like the Outlaws game and that model, you're going to really enjoy this, which is awesome to hear. He goes on to say that, you know, he's raced at Atlanta, Bristol, Charlotte, and Homestead, and they all feel great. Uh, he's racing, obviously, with just the AI cars, no aids, and using a gamepad, so just a controller. And he said it's really fun to drive, really fun to modulate the throttle, and that he wrecked at Bristol quite a bit. Uh, goes on to say that he only really wanted to tease everybody with these updates because it's it's just a prototype, uh, but he switched the Xfinity car and he said it feels very much different than what the cup car feels like, which is a really fun thing because they are two very different race cars and they feel completely different. One has a 15 inch tire with a big sidewall. The other one has an 18 inch tire with no sidewall on it and it's pendant suspension. Um, on the cup car, they're going to feel different and you're going to drive them differently. And he said it does not feel like the uh, Xfinity car is just a detuned version of the cup car build, which is honestly really, really good to hear. So I'm excited to see some actual gameplay video, um, you know, some screenshots come out of this, learn more about this game uh, as we head over the next probably nine months before it comes out. But for now, if it's going to be like the Outlaws game, that's a good thing in my opinion.
And then we got another update on Monday as well. NASCAR Full Speed will be back for a second season on Netflix. It was officially official on Monday, and that is a massive thing for NASCAR. NASCAR really needs a docuseries, right? I mean, Formula One's growth and popularity, its meteoric rise, is directly contributed to that of Drive to Survive. People, you know, hit on that during its second season into its third season during the pandemic. Obviously, NASCAR, hopefully, knock on wood, is not going to, we, we as a people won't have to suffer through another pandemic, but NASCAR having a docuseries is a great way to put their product in front of people that maybe aren't aware of it. Maybe somebody that's looking for something new, they're like, oh, hey, I like Drive to Survive. Maybe I'll like NASCAR full speed. And if you haven't watched the, sec or the first season, Go ahead and go watch it tonight on Netflix. It's only five episodes. I really hope we get more than five episodes in uh, season two. I'm not going to be upset if we don't, but I thought the content was really great. The ending of the last eight minutes of episode four were fantastic. It showed everything about what these guys go through in the playoffs. It was raw. It was emotional. It was sad. It was happy. It was everything you would be looking for as a fan. You get to see the raw emotion of Denny Hamlin and his defeat at Martinsville last year. You get to see the jubilation of Ryan Blaney locking himself in to that championship race at Phoenix. William Byron, after nearly suffering through, I don't know, a heat stroke, his heart rate was 189, just absolutely brutal into that race for him, for him to transfer in. You have Tyler Reddick with that thousand yard stare, just being like, what could have been in this situation? All of it is really, really well done. And I don't have enough good things to say about um, about this show. And I hope it's just as good next season uh, in 20, well, for 2025 is when we'll see it, but obviously covering the 2024 season. Now, I know some people are going to complain that like Denny Hamlin, 2311 Racing, it basically became their docuseries. They were the drivers and the teams that were very much willing to open up their lives to the Netflix cameras. They understood the marketing side of this. They understood the content creating side. They understood how good this would be for not only their personal brands, but also for their brands of their partners. So they allowed everybody in. Now, in the second season, they obviously have not signed the charter agreement. I would assume that we're not going to see as much, if any, content from uh, those three drivers uh, going forward. It'd be interesting to see what's there, but hopefully that you know means we're going to get a look into some other drivers, some other drivers that understand the benefits of having this Netflix series. Of course, there's going to be guys like Chase Elliott that aren't going to want to do it, um, which is fine. Private life is you know, whatever, but maybe doing some at track stuff would be entertaining. We learned that William Byron likes Legos, Kyle Larson, maybe he has a bigger role in it in, you know, the second season. Maybe we get a look at Brad Keselowski, uh, Austin Sendrick, some of these other guys that we don't really get a ton of, you know, content from, but overall it is a good thing that this is back, um, you know, for a second season. So hats off to NASCAR, the NASCAR digital team, and everybody involved over over there that got this done. This is a good thing for the sport. So let me know in the comments what you think about Carson Quapple going full time next year with JRM, the NASCAR video game, NASCAR Netflix getting a second season, as well as SVG's comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.